everyone. On today's episode, we have an amazing guest with us. His name is Kyle Aldridge, and he has been riding his bike every day for a year for 277 days. He's going to share some insights on that journey with us, give us his incredible backstory, and he's got some absolute dropped bombs of knowledge. So make sure you listen to the entire thing, and I hope you enjoy the episode. Good morning, and welcome back to another episode of Winning the Moment. I am Cody Aiden, and today I have a special guest with me. He's been riding his bike every day for a year. His name is Kyle Aldridge. He also happens to be a team member at Vibrant, and I'm so excited to share his story. Uh, It's been amazing to watch him on this journey of growing a video and riding his bike every year. Uh, I was lucky enough to cameo one of those rides in a a Walmart in (laughs) Vernal, Utah, and so I'm just super excited to jump into it. And I think I usually go into backstory, but I think the most interesting thing we can talk about right now, the thing that I want people to go and watch you do is ride your bike every day for years let's talk about how that started yeah um hey everybody i'm kyle and uh yeah i started riding it was july last year i was riding i love my job by the way cody i love my job (laughs) um i was i was driving i commute for about 45 minutes uh to and from so an hour and a half every day which is amazing level of dedication that you are are willing and able to do that i appreciate that Yeah. yeah it's it's fun um but during that time i was just getting bored and uh wasn't doing anything for myself so i decided during that time like i need to do something for myself i keep in mind i'm driving home now it's pouring rain and i go what do i enjoy doing because this right now like this me driving back and forth every day for a year or every day every day for a year yeah every day (laughs) (laughs) i'm just so used to saying that Uh, me driving back and forth every day just wasn't doing it i wasn't having fun anymore i was getting burnt out i go what can i do that makes me happy um and i was like i'm i like riding my bike So I'll just do that. I need to do that more. And we had all been on this growth video train. Everybody who's listening to this, I'm sure has heard of the, you know, just press record growth video. Right. And I I am a social media manager. So I was like, can I grow with video while also doing something I love and have being in that niche market? So I decided that day. I go, well, the best time to start something is now. What do we always say? The the, the whole tree thing. When's the best time to plant a tree? Yeah, right. 20 years ago. Yeah, when's the, when's the next best time? It's now. Right. Um, right then was I was I said, I, it's pouring rain. I go, I'm going to get on my bike when I get home and go for my first ride. And I'm just going to commit. Um, and at so, first it was 10 minutes, right? Or Yeah, yeah 10 so minutes. right now it's just a minimum of 10 minutes. It always has been a minimum oh, always, of 10 minutes. Okay, it was. Mm-hmm. Always 10 minutes. And the reason I do that is because, you know, life gets hectic, life gets crazy. You don't always have an opportunity to, to do something along those lines. Um, for instance, when we go to Vernal for the Utah Tourism Conference, uh, my tire blows up in the back of Cody's truck. Now, keep in mind, like, bringing a bike everywhere is super, is a is super inconvenient. Yeah, we have to it bring the truck. awful. Because Kyle's got to have his bike. I call Cody. I go, yo, can we take the truck to Vernal? I need my bike. He's like, ugh, Yeah. Now we've got we got an Airbnb in Vernal, so we've got cornhole, we've got uh, a speaker, we've got suitcases, we've got all sorts of stuff. Yeah, I just like jam my bike in. You got to take it apart and all the pieces, yeah. and you got to like get the towels for yeah. the grease on the gears. Yeah, and... so I have a towel in there, I have my bag in there, and we're driving to Vernal. We stop in Ridgefield, I think. Yeah, because Breck had just got his Bronco. Breck had just got his Bronco. We stop in Ridgefield, and I hear just boom. Just the loudest explosion. <laughs> and I like everyone was like, what was that? And me, I was like, oh, shit. You knew. Like, I no one know, knew but you. I know what that is. So I just kind of like wandered over to the truck, opened it up. And I had been having problems with this tire, but I had neglected to tell anybody that because <laughs> I thought it was fixed. <laughs> um, my tire is set up tubeless so that, you know, it it's less flats. Uh, no pinch flats or anything like that. Anyway, so my tire is set up tubeless and... That thing exploded in the back of the truck. All over everything. Because that's where all the bags were Dude, and the speakers. And... All over everything, except it didn't get... It w- should have gotten on everything. Except my bag oh, protected was it. right there <laughs> in the right spot. That's right. It really only it got on my Bluetooth speaker. It got on your Bluetooth speaker. It got all over my backpack and all over the side of the truck and like the top yeah, of like your the, protected yeah. shell. Uh-huh. That was it though. Everything else... I mean, Cody's... Beautiful leather shoes are sitting there right oh, by Oh, that's them. right. Yeah. Like, I mean, everything was like, it was crazy. Anyway, so it's an absolute nuisance. We get to Vernal on that trip. It's eight o'clock. 
Yeah, we tried to get food. We couldn't get food anywhere. Couldn't remember? get food anywhere. We, we went and sat like... in that one restaurant. They wanted nothing to do with us. Oh, yeah. We tried to go out to a little bar. and We tried to go to the brewery okay. first, and the wait was too long. Yeah, wait was too so long. So we walked to like a lesser brewery around yeah, the back. Much, uh, yeah. And then no one wanted to help us. Oh, we got They got Jimmy John's, remember? Was it Jimmy John's or did we get Costa that night? Or they, they went and got Jimmy John's, Spencer and Leah. And while they did that, you and I went to Walmart. And then we got Costa uh, Cafe Rio after the fact. That's true. Um yeah, so the only thing I could think to do at this moment was I was like, "There's a Walmart here, and they have bikes." Yeah. So Cody and I, we should we should link this. Real, what, yeah, I was gonna say what we'll do up. is when this episode comes out, we'll link it, and then maybe you can share it on your story that day yeah. so people can go back and find it. So Cody and I wander into Walmart. I go to the back. We find the bikes, and I just hop on one and start riding all around. And Cody's just filming me. Bless his heart. He's just filming me. He's like, <laughs> "Cool." And then he goes, "All right, Kyle." You've done it long enough. Let's go. Like, I'm, I'm done with this. I was like, Cody, it hasn't been 10 minutes. Yeah, you set a timer. I set a timer. So we, we I have a Strava recording of me in Walmart. And it, it's literally just like a, a little, if you were ever on Strava, you can see like when somebody stays in one place for a long a time. It's just a bunch of squiggly <laughs> lines. Well, and you actually rode your bike for 10 minutes. It's not like we, pro- we recorded 10 minutes of content. Yeah. We recorded more than that because you were physically on the bike. I was on the bike. I mean, all my reels are maybe a minute long. Yeah. Um, just depending on the day and what I got going on. But yeah, I literally just rode around Walmart through clothing. Like nobody stopped me. It was the craziest. Not thing. one person. Said Not a one word. person said a word. To the me. best part of the video was like the workers are like there in the middle, like putting boxes away, yeah. and you're just like riding just around riding them. By them. <laughs> I like tried to avoid them. It so was they, it was pretty great. I actually loved it. I had a blast. It was a wild day. And then but. didn't someone in Vernal take care of you too? Yeah. Uh, shout out Grail Cycles. Um, if you're ever in Vernal and need work done. They're up in Vernal. I believe they have a shop in uh, my hometown now, Cedar City. That's too. right. They had just bought it. Um, but yeah, shout out Grail Cycles. Huge thank you. Uh, that was fantastic. They hooked it up and, and got my my tire back on. So I was able to ride the next couple of days while we were up there. I think there's a lot of philosophies in winning the moment that you can attribute to you riding your bike every day for a year because so much of what stops people from succeeding in whatever it is that they want, right? It's irrelevant what that obstacle is or that objective is that you have yours in this moment happens riding a bike every day for a year, but you can always create an excuse as to why you can't do something right. And an excuse is a lie you tell yourself. And what Kyle probably wasn't thinking about in the middle of June in the desert <laughs> is that winter was coming. Winter is coming. <laughs> and had you had and a you, hell of a winter it's been right. literally the I'm 26 right now. And this has been the deepest winter of my life. The most extreme winter. It's been the deepest winter in Utah history, I say, my yeah. life. It's literally the deepest winter in Utah history. It's absolutely absurd. So Kyle lives in Cedar. Um, if you're not from here and you listen to the episode, it's about 45 minutes north of St. George. And about uh, 5,000 feet higher. And elevate. Yeah, it's yeah. huge. So Brian Head, which is right there uh, next to Cedar, is the actually the highest um, ski resort in all of Utah, which is shocking. Yeah. Highest, highest base, base yep. elevation. Yep. And so Kyle has been riding his bike. And these are actually my favorite ones to watch. Uh, I don't know why. That's probably like no, watching you suffer. A little masochistic. Like, yeah. <laughs> entertaining. Uh, and he is just riding his bike through like inches of snow. It yeah. has just been. And so if you are trying to achieve something in your life and you're thinking like, oh, I can't do it because this, that, or the other thing, go watch Kyle's content. Because if you watch that, you can never again lie to yourself because if there's ever a time you didn't need to ride your bike kyle had a multitude of them and he pushed (laughs) through every single time and i think it's important to say you know you'll hear me say this a lot but excuses are lies that you tell yourself because all we're doing is rationalizing our failure so we don't have to feel bad about it and you could have had so many opportunities to do that and now what day are you at now oh what is yesterday was 276 so today's 278 Seven. I'm not a math guy. <laughs> <laughs> and it just really is amazing because I don't think there's many people who have ever done anything consistently for a year what? in any capacity besides like just showing up. But any objective that they have that's just for them. I mean, I've certainly never done anything consistently for a year. Yeah. I've never done that. I've never done anything consistently for more than three months. And so in especially the... every day, it's one thing to do it like, I don't know. Yeah. No, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, like James Clear talks on Atomic Habits that like the difference between like long term success and short term success is like uh, we were talking the other day. I want to sign up to run the St. George Marathon. Yeah. And because of that, I will then run like once I sign up for it and I've got this commitment and this mm-hmm. and this this time in front of me, I will run every day because I am preparing for this thing. Right. But once the marathon is over, 
I will never run again. Will it continue? No, it won't. That's that's and that's been the biggest question for me. Yeah, it won't. Well, it won't continue for me because I th- and I think that this is really what I'm getting to for you is that I wasn't. I'm not running because I'm a runner. I'm running because I'm going to run a marathon. Like yeah. you now, who you are is a biker, mm-hmm. right? Like that is who you are, and so maybe it won't be every day, but it is a part of you now, right? Because you are. You have created this habit that just is who you are now. So maybe yeah. you won't do it every single day, but I think for the foreseeable future, riding your bike is going to be a part of what you do. Oh, for sure. I, I would agree. Um, speaking of like hard times and, and not, you know, having excuses, I was asleep once. My girlfriend wakes me up and she lives. No. Goes, yeah. Liv goes, Hey babe. Like, so we're laying in bed and I, it's been a long day. We're laying in bed, hanging out. I doze off. She wakes me up. She goes, Hey babe. It's like, what's up? She goes, you didn't ride yet. I was like, Oh, you're right. All right, so I get up, I sleep in the nude. I get up butt naked, throw my clothes on. You should have ridden naked. I should have ridden naked. That'd I don't have know been, what I was I've done that once. It was it was not like during this ride <laughs> period, but uh, um, out in the desert in the middle of nowhere, it was a good time. But you got to do one of those before this is up. I should. I should maybe I'll, when I go down to ride today. <laughs> yeah, strip down. Um, yes, yeah, so I get up, throw my clothes on, and you know I'm just in a hoodie and sweats, but throw my clothes on and go ride. And in my video, I'm like, "Hi, I was asleep. I'm up now." This is my ride. And I could, you know, do go That's an amazing paces. level of dedication. Yeah. It was, it was a nightmare. I think one of the one of the things too, and something that's interesting, um, a lot of people play their cards really close to their chest as far as what they want to do in life. Sure. And, you know, to a degree that works, but I think it's important to tell people because if you're not telling people who like aside from these bands uh, shout out winning the moment <laughs> um, aside from these bands like you're the only person accountable for yourself in this right absolutely here. when i'm posting on i mean i have you know i'm super thankful for everybody who follows me or is following my journey or who has shown up because well of and this. i look forward to it right like every day i'm like because it's usually like around nine ish o'clock at night I'd yeah say it's I'll about when you yeah about when they come out because you've got a whole day ahead of you but i look forward to it like every time and and i will support everyone who i follow on instagram because i feel like that's what you're there for. Yeah. Show up for me you now. But a lot of times that support is just me hitting the like. Like I'm not oh, even yeah. actively engaged in their content whatsoever. The only person I follow when their thing comes up, I click it full screen sound on. That's what I'm talking about. You know, because I want to, I want to, I'm genuinely, I'm, com- I'm committed. Yeah. Because I've been watching you ride your bike every day a year yeah. for 280 days or whatever it is. You know what I mean? So in fact, you're the only form of content I consistently watch. So let's go. I think everybody should feel that way. Yeah. <laughs> I think everybody should watch me ride my bike every day for a year. But I think you're right that it is important when you profess your objectives. Yeah. Because I believe the universe wants us all to succeed, but the universe needs to know what it is that you want to do. And I think that when you vocalize it, your intention is that much more strong, right? Yeah, and you, have so, to speak, you have to speak into existence the things that you want. Absolutely. And then you've got this entire... Um, grouping of people who are also holding you accountable, right? Like live waking you up to yeah. ride your bike. Or if you hadn't posted a video, you know that our whole team would be like, bro, what, what, what happened? What happened? You know, like, why didn't you do that? Yeah. And so you, you know that you've now got this entire audience that's also committed to your success. And I talk about when I give speeches and stuff, when I became a district manager of, of the year for our company back when I was really young, it all started with me saying I was going to do it. Yeah. Like had I just gone to work and gone through the motions I know for a fact there's no way I would have achieved that because I would have just trying – I just would have been doing the job. But instead, I vocalized this thing. And so everyone, my staff, my team, my bosses, my peers were all holding me accountable to that thing. And so I think you're absolutely right. Like let the let the universe, let the world know what you're trying to do because they every, people – the people that matter in your life should want to see you succeed. And so if you've surrounded yourself with the right people, then they're going to be on that journey with you, helping yeah. support you every step of the way. That's why we drove the truck that day. Mm-hmm. That's why we went to Walmart. Like yeah. I would never allow an obstacle to get in the way of you doing that because I'm also committed to your success. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. The amount of support I've received while doing these things has been um, astronomical. Uh, same with like when I did my big, when I did the big ride in Texas, like, yeah, yeah, let's talk about that really quick. So for the audience, kind of let them know what that was and yeah. how that came about. Um, okay, so real quick, I'll finish off. But same with the big ride in Texas. Like the amount of support that I got during that ride was just blew me away. I was like, wow, there's so many people. And I'm not saying like, oh, like, there's so many people who care about me. But it's genuinely like, wow, like a lot of people care yeah. about my success and about what I'm doing. 
that means a lot. And like, I think that's true for everybody. Like there are people who care. They might not say it. They might not vocalize that to you, but there are people who are watching you who care yeah. and, and in a supportive way, not watching you, judging you. I and mean, you gave them a, that you too. gave them a platform to care and to show that. Right. Yeah. And so I think had you not done what you were doing up until that big bike race, like let's say for example, that you d- didn't have this journey, but you still did the race. I think I would have been significantly less invested in the race yeah. than I was after I've watching you 260 days before, because yeah. then it was like this big moment with inside this journey of yours. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So to preface now, we'll get to that. So to preface this big race we're talking about, uh, huge checks, huge, huge shout out to, um, at then it was the East Texas showdown. Now it is the Texas showdown series. They just opened up, um, three different, they're, they're working on the third one, but they have two different, uh, races going on now. One's central Texas and one's East Texas. I did East Texas, um, central Texas just got announced. So I'm looking forward to hopefully getting down to doing that this year for sure. Going back for East Texas, Is central Texas, like Dallas, Fort Worth type area. Do you know? Um, I believe so i'm not entirely <laughs> sure he hasn't released the route yet uh shout out patrick farnsworth he also runs a podcast called uh, bikes or death it's the other like like virtual gm and bikes or death are like the two podcasts i listen to nice um oh and bomb hole um but yeah he uh he opened up he started this race in it's kind of like an intro bike packing race so for those of you who don't know bike packing is basically like long distance um bike races where you know and not races necessarily bike packing is is bike travel isn't it a race for some of them though like aren't there dudes who are doing it they're like i'm gonna finish first yeah oh for okay. sure yeah. so uh, this was a race so to preface i said that incorrectly bike packing is just bike travel um generally through interesting terrain sure um this is a bike pack race it was formatted as such um bike pack races bike pack races are uh self-supported so there's no aid stations there's no yeah. Um, you know, there's no support in that. You can't have a team of people. Yeah, you can't. I mean, like if you're watching the Tour de France, like they're swinging by, they switch out your wheel. Yeah, you, you're on your way still. Yeah, um, you get rest and all that uh, on this race. So we it was 400 miles, um, in three days. I did it. I completed it in 57 hours, and it was easily the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Um, the first day I rode 145 miles. Slept in a post office. For those of you who don't know, you can sleep in post offices. Uh, don't quote me on that, but you can do that. Because uh, <laughs> they all have a P.O. box, and you, you have to have access to your P.O. box. Um, so, yeah, I slept in a post office first day. Uh, day two, I rode 23 hours straight. So I woke up at 3 a.m., rode until uh, about, let's see, I left at 3.30 from the post office and then got to a hotel at... Um, Two thirty. So was that when you fell asleep while you're writing? Yeah, yeah. So I fell asleep uh, about hour twenty two. I fell asleep. Gosh, could you imagine had you not like jolted yourself awake? Crazy. I think wreck? I. Was, I think I would have just simply fallen over. Like I, I wasn't even going fast. Were you anymore. clipped in though? Yeah, I was clipped in. So it would have been. It would have. Yeah. Hurt. <laughs> it would have hurt more. Um. Yeah, I'm rolling to to Cody's point. Like I'm rolling down this hill into a place called Love Lady, Texas, and I'm <laughs> coming down a hill. And this is the first payment we've been on in an hour or so. So I've been used to uh, uh, yeah. this keeping yeah. me awake. And now I'm just on this pristine pavement. Oh, yes. And, and I just I go down this hill. Yeah, I got my wheels rolling along yeah. that pavement. And I just, and as I, I like come back to, I'm going up a hill. And I've slowed down so much that I'm starting to fall over. And you know, like that moment yeah. when you fall and yeah. you wake up, whether you're in a chair falling asleep, your head nods yeah. or whatever it is, I snap to it and keep pedaling and ended up going through and then i wrote 100 so that so was did the, you stay at a hotel that night yeah I, I slept on a floor so i had ended up linking up with um the guy i went down with my buddy jake he ended up not finishing um due to some physical stuff but i ended up meeting up with a couple guys from arkansas uh brandon and brendan shout out to those boys uh they got me through day two a thousand percent i would not have made it um they got me to they had a hotel that night so i linked up with them at about mile 200 no at about Mile 65 for that day, but it was right around 200. Okay, so about the halfway point. Or was it even? Yeah, so about the halfway point. And they were like, well, we're going to we're going to 300 tonight. We're going to Trinity, Texas. And I was like, all right, let's do it. I'm in. So, And that's at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So now we do 100 more miles from 2 to – so we, we do a 10-mile-an-hour pace. Wow. 100 more miles through the day. Um, so I did 165 miles that day. What hurt the most? Like your legs, your butt, your back? <sighs> Near the end, my ass hurt. 
That's what I would have thought. Yeah, near like, the end, my ass. Even if I do hurt. like a I was cycling in, class, my ass hurts. Yeah, I was in chamois and huge shout out Brooks Saddles. I love them. Uh, just a leather, just thrown. Um, but even then, I think really it was the chafing. I'd never chafed before in oh, like cycling yeah. bibs. Yeah. So that was a whole new experience for me. Um, yeah. So I think really you didn't like, have the baby powder. You weren't prepared. I wasn't prepared, man. Yeah. I, I I did actually have it on me. I I stubbornly did not want to use it. Because you thought because like, I had never used it before, and like, I was like, I, I, don't, need I, I don't need it. Yeah, I don't need that. Tough. That's not for me. Uh, I needed it bad, <laughs> uh, and I I reaped the, I reaped uh, the rewards of not having it for sure. So yeah. Um, oh, and then day three we ripped a hundred miles to the finish line. Was able to ditch some stuff at the so the where it starts is Point Blank, Texas, at a place called the Bullet Grill, and um, it's considered neutral ground, so you can go in and you know, get food there or whatever, ditch your stuff there. Okay. And the, at mile two thirty, th- no, three thirty three, you stop there and you can ditch your stuff if you want. And I did, I was at that point when I originally started, I was like, I'm not going to ditch my stuff. Like I want to yeah, take it with me yeah, the whole way. You're a champion. And I was just like, dude, I'm so tired. Like I'm throwing get it out of here. Yeah. I got rid of like anything I didn't need. I had my, I had my tools with me still. I had like some food, some water. Um, and then I changed into like a little bit it was a warmer day that day and like the nights out there were cold i think it got down to like 30 degrees one night wow like thankfully i was inside for all the nights but i remember waking up one morning on day two and it was just like um, i hate being cold i'm not going just uh, shivering you've not read the book to shake your sleeping self right i haven't yet no you haven't that's i need to get that so does that's, he, is there an audiobook of that i bet there is okay um so I, jedediah jenkins he i met him because he was a keynote speaker at a tourism event and he rode his bike from Oregon all the way down to Patagonia. Mm. And if you're a book reader, uh, I highly, highly recommend it. Um, check and see if it's audible, if that's how, if you like to listen to your books. Uh, but his story is amazing. And I'm not a bike rider myself, but like listening to his story, it's like that it made me want to do it, you know? Yeah. Because it's just like the story that he shared was just so unique and all the play, and you experience things differently on a bike, you know, because yeah. you're really a part of it. And so you immerse yourself in it for right. sure. So what's next for you on like your bike journey? Um, as far as biking goes, I'm just gonna keep riding until I'm done with my year for sure. I get that question a lot, actually. Like, hey, are you gonna are you gonna keep doing this after your uh, 365 days are up? And uh, probably. Uh, most likely biking is just part of who I am now. Yeah. It's what I do. I love it. It makes me happy. Um, I think that like when it comes to travel and stuff, I'll probably back off a little. Yeah. Um, but again, like it's really, I might get like a folding bike or something, something yeah. they have a, a, a bike called a Brompton. I think it's a Brompton. Um, and it's, it's like got small wheels, folds up, you can throw it in a suitcase. I think I'm going to get one of those. And then That's when I go awesome. places, I can just rip it. I love that. Just like throw it in my, cause I don't take that much stuff when I go when I like travel, yeah, like, I really don't. I pack like one bag and that's it. But if I can have like my carry on and a little bike, a little bike, ride that thing in the airport and stuff. I that'd love that. So sick. strong for the brand. Yeah, strong for the brand. Good for the brand. Um. So yeah, I think I'll. I'll I mean, I'm gonna con- continue to create content. That's been one of the funnest things for me out of all of this has been creating content for myself, being able to be a little artistic. Yeah. Um. Do you have a reel that's your favorite? Like, is there one in this? My go to my Instagram, Airtime okay. Aldridge. Um. You can probably find me just searching Kyle Aldridge as well. But go to my Instagram, and it's just my top pinned one. And it's okay. of the East Texas Showdown. Oh, yeah. That's easily my yeah. favorite one I've ever done. That's it's a good it's one. A crazy, little adventurous, you know, a lot of fun for me. Is it also your most viewed one? <sighs> Should we look? Let's I'd be look. curious. Yeah, I'd, I'd be curious. To I don't know. think it is my most viewed one. Maybe. It's my favorite. Was you, did you, was one of your Tour de Mav ones, was that a part of this <laughs> process? Um, Those are fun. I've done it during this, so but the one I did for this one wasn't as that almost three thousand views on no, the that's good. East Texas one. I think I've had one that's gone higher, but three thousand is good. Three thousand is good. So one thing that's cool too is you also because you made this commitment, you've got you've received some stuff from doing it too, right? Like didn't you get some stuff for East East yeah. Texas Showdown because you you were out there and yeah and in East, that space? Uh, I've had a huge um Huge thank you to everybody who supported me in this as far as like brands and people and um yeah. So East Texas, uh, I was awarded the Good Energy Award. Um I'm a pretty checks out. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so I was awarded the Good Energy Award by uh by the other athletes there and really appreciated that. Um I try to go into life with a pretty positive attitude and make everybody feel welcome and, and that's what that was. 
uh, I ended up with a, uh, I haven't received it yet. I actually just put in my order for it yesterday. I kind of forgot about it until yesterday. I was looking through emails. Um, but yeah, I got like a jersey from a company called Embark. Uh, Embark Maple. They make uh, energy goos. Okay. Like all natural stuff yeah. with maple syrup. Um, and then huge, huge shout out to State. They're one of the reasons I have the bike I have and I'm, I'm doing the things I'm doing is because I reached out two years ago to um my cousin used to work for state and i reached out and i was like hey i want a new bike like i want to get a gravel bike of sorts uh a little bike packing adventure bike um and he was like and he so he used to work for state bicycle okay where's Sorry, state uh, based out of they're based out of tempe Arizona. Oh, okay cool um anyway so i reached out to him and he put me in contact with the owner of the company huge shout out my d um but yeah i reached out and they gave me a, a you know 40 percent off code i used that i bought my bike and I've just been blowing up their Instagram, poor bastards. For because <laughs> uh, you got some stuff for the race too, right? Like a discount. On yeah, like yeah. They, or something like I, that. I just reached out and asked for. Uh, I said, "Hey, this is what I'm doing. I'm doing this race. Like, you can say no entirely, but um, if you want to support me in any way, like, this is what I'm doing." And they were like, "Yeah, send us what you want." So I did uh, a pair of bibs. Um, and what are bibs? Uh, like chamois. I don't know how to explain them. Oh, like, like, they have like, a baby, like baby clothes? Yeah, like baby clothes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like Lycra, oh, like onesie. sportswear, yeah. 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 Okay, um, so that's what you're wearing in that one picture where like you got your button up and it's like flailing. And yeah, and you can see like, like a little, leotard. Yeah, it's like a little leotard. Yeah, okay. Um, but it's got the butt cushion. Yeah, it's got a butt cushion in it, which nice. is a, a savior. A must. Yeah, it's a must uh, on those big rides for sure. But yeah, so they sent me uh, like some some soft, soft goods and some hard goods. Um to make my, I need a new chain. I need a new chain uh, cassette, stuff like that. So, um, and then I actually was just talking to. Hopefully, by the time this is out, this I was just talking to him yesterday, and he's sending me um, a clunker. For those of you who don't know, it's like spake, like basically a like a road bike. A, no, a, a clunker is basically a modified beach cruiser to a mountain bike. Beach cruiser, that's what I was. Yeah. Thinking. So it's got it's it's got you know the old coaster. Wait, brakes. so you're getting a, a whole bike? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Huge shout Could you state. ever imagine when you enough. started that, it, that like, no. within that journey, you, someone would give you a bike for free? No. At, at no point. Um, incredibly thankful. I'm actually on their ambassador team now. So that's super fun for me. How cool is that? Yeah. So what? Like, what's the value of that bike? Uh, what, as far as it cost? Yeah. Oh, like 500 bucks. No way. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. How cool for you. Yeah. Super fun. I like incredibly thankful. Um, couldn't feel more blessed to be where I'm at right now and, and doing the things I'm doing. Um, yeah. feels good to feel good. It feels good to feel good, man. That's awesome. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, who you are. So I really wanted to touch on that because I think for the audience listening, it's such a fun journey to watch. It's really inspirational because I think that Kyle has really shown like you can do it if, if you're really committed. No matter what obstacles get in your way, you can push through them. And when you do that, so many good things happen because of it, right? So I yeah. really wanted to touch on that. But let's talk about who you are like what what makes Kyle Kyle what's your backstory um whew, let's see I come from a, a divorced home I was raised by my mother my grandparents and my sister and then a, an entire community of uh, I grew up in a pretty small little neighborhood <laughs> when you say a community <laughs> I just feel like I know you didn't grow up in a compound but the way you <laughs> said it I mean okay <laughs> funny enough my aunt I have an aunt who lives up, and this all happened like a little later into my life, like during uh, my junior junior high and high school. Okay, but I have an aunt who lives behind me. Man, no, she they moved up there while I was in elementary school. So most of my life, I've had family around me. Okay, so you did. So have a so I grew up in a small neighborhood, really a really fun spot. Um, I had an aunt who moved in up behind me, maybe in like two thousand and six or seven, and then another aunt who moved in in probably like two thousand eleven or two thousand and twelve. And they all moved in within like the area. Okay. Um, well, I guess that aunt didn't move up till I was in high school. But anyways, um, so I've been a part of like a collective raised me and it, and it took a collective to do it. I believe it. By all means. There's <laughs> to, no, this is not a one person job. To wrangle job. you in. Yeah. Yeah. This is not a one person job. Um, <laughs> incredibly thankful for my upbringing. And yeah, I was raised with a lot of freedom. Um, it, again, my neighborhood's pretty secluded. It's up a canyon. And I basically like the doors open like in the summer, the doors opened at, you know, 7 a.m. And our, our house doors never close. Like we just don't close them. Like, we just open them up for the day and in and out everything, you know, people come and go, dogs come and go. We, 
the dogs in the neighborhood would all come to our house and hang out. Um, and like, there'd be six dogs in the backyard. Wow. That one just come and in and out of, of our your, house to your dog two. Okay. Yeah, we had two dogs. Uh, six of them would come hang out and every dog would just come chill in the backyard. My grandpa kept the yard all nice and pretty and everyone would come hang out. But anyways, I had free reign growing up and bikes were a huge part of that. Um, just playing outside. I built a tree house when I was in high school. Well, a story of summer is pretty much what I did. I would build the first, the first floor was lashed with like shoelaces and spare rope I'd found around. And I mean, wow. I la- I had read like in a Boy Scout book, like a lashing thing. And so I like had lashed together these I have no idea what that means. Um, You take one board, put it on another. I'm sorry, Mike. Put one there. And then you like the way you rope, the way you wrap Uh, rope around it basically ties it into the tree. So I had built the floor, first floor like that. And then the second floor, like the next summer, my first floor made it through the winter. The next summer I started the second floor and was building walls and such. Um, And then, and and I had a a saw at that point and I was, I was going and snagging my grandpa's tools and building it with, you know, a hammer and saw. And then the next summer I built a deck for it. And like that I did with like a screw gun and with, anyways, a huge like learning curve for me or a learning moment for me. I never never knew that. That's cool. And you're uh, listening to Matthew McConaughey's green lights right now, right? I am. Yeah. I just got through that chapter where he talks about his tree house. It was super fun. And he like snuck out at nighttime. Yeah. To go build it. Yeah. That's another great great book um i highly recommend green lights uh, i read it because that's how i like to read um but my wife listened to the audiobook and she thought it was incredible i'm listening I... to it right now and if you ever want to just be happy just listen to matthew mcconaughey for like six hours <laughs> it's yeah. fantastic i'd imagine that audiobook is pretty good it's really good i love it okay so that brings so you're at this point in your life yeah. your high school did you yeah say? so i'm through i'm uh i finished the treehouse up my in junior high uh so i'm headed into high school get my car you know i'm doing my whole thing uh, high school is fun. I started welding. I started video production classes. Um, those are the two things that really stood out. I'm not much of a, a student by any means. And during high school, I decided college isn't for me. Sure. Um, it's really not. And, and or it wasn't at that moment. I don't know that it still is. Um, so I... Isn't that interesting? Because you've graduated now, so you have a degree. I, I walk on next Friday. That's amazing. So yeah. Got so college is not for me, but I walk on Friday. And you still don't yet know the answer to, is it for you or not? No, I don't think it is. Somebody asked me the other day, like, oh, like I was wearing my SU business shirt. Yeah. Uh, my my $40,000 t-shirt. <laughs> um, and somebody came up to me and was like, oh, like I see, which never in a million years I think would happen. I mean, I'm sitting having lunch with my uncle. Um, and somebody comes up and goes, hey, I see you're wearing an SU business shirt. Like I was thinking about going there. And I, I straight up, I look up and I go, do you want to? And he was like, well, like, I, like, I don't know. Like, I, I think I want to go to school. And I was like, I literally, I said, like, don't do it unless you know what you want to do. And if you have an idea of what you want to do right now, or what did I say? I said, don't do it unless you don't know what you want to do. If you have an idea. It gives what, you like four years to figure out. It gives you four years. It, gives, it, gives it gave you me, it gave me five out. and a half to figure it out. <laughs> if you know what you want to do or think you know what you want to do, go do that. Absolutely. Don't waste time. Yeah, that's the that's the, that was my biggest takeaway from university. So maybe college is for me. Maybe that's what I learned. Yeah, was the biggest takeaway for me was that time is so valuable, and if you're gonna sit in college to get a degree to do something that you already know you want to do, unless you're gonna be a doctor or a lawyer, yeah, where you need the schooling yeah, to school execute does not the matter. Go yeah. be a business professional. Go absolutely learn the things you want to do. You can speak to this too. Like yeah. there is no need for you to have that piece of paper. Like you're where you're at and you don't have that piece of paper. That piece of paper doesn't No, well, I like matter. to say you learn more in doing than you do in learning. You do. Yeah. Time is so valuable and if you know what you want to do or have an idea of what you want to do, take advantage of that now while you're young and especially in this day and age where literally you can do anything and there's all these platforms to let people know you do that thing yeah you know what i mean like if you rode your bike 10 years ago every day for a year no one would know and no one would care because there wouldn't be a way to even follow that journey yeah right and so now you can genuinely start something so easily and create awareness for it so effectively um that i think you're absolutely right if you know what you want to do then go do that unless unless that thing has a certain skill set that you need to acquire and and then in that scenario i'd say well go work for someone who's doing that thing and learn on the job 100 percent. so then that way you can take all your learnings and then you can execute it for yourself i think another valuable lesson too there is i've done a bunch of things i don't like 
Like I've, I've worked in fields. I didn't, I no longer want to work in because I worked in them. I did construction for my uncle and truly like not for me. The money was fine. I couldn't imagine you doing that. Oh yeah. Imagine me swinging ahead. They call me destruction. Kyle, I'd go in, I'd go in. (laughs) I was the, I was the, uh, we did a lot of remodels and I would go in and destroy the place, clean it all up. And I can see you doing that part. And then they'd send in the actual builders yeah. to build it up. <laughs> it was fun for me. Just but like, operating in chaos. Yeah, just in pure <laughs> chaos. That's how I roll sometimes. Um, but yeah, so I did that. So I think another valuable lesson in, in doing is doing things you – or finding out what you don't want to do because that's also super yeah, important in that's life. Really, you need to know. That's kind of like you could almost preface it as a loss, right? We learn more in losses than we do in victory because when yeah, you, Somebody I know has said that before. Yeah, that dude's brilliant. <laughs> that guy's brilliant. <laughs> because what happens is when you're doing something you don't like, it's very definitive. Like, yeah. oh, that's not for me. And so now you know no energy. I'm not going to put anything towards that. Like that's yeah. just – that's getting off the shelf. And every time you take something off the shelf, then you're able to be, get that much closer to success. That's funny. In Green Lights today, I was, re- I was listening – and he said that almost those exact same things as far as like, um, he, he said, you need to know what you aren't to know what you are. Wow. So basically what you're saying is Matthew McConaughey and I have a very you guys, similar You guys belief. are basically the same person. That's what I'm <laughs> gathering. No, yeah, it's, you, it's interesting. Someone just said the other day on Instagram, I was like going through all my book feeds, you know, like trying mm-hmm. to engage with my audience. And someone said that they didn't like Atomic Habits because it was too much like this other book. I think he called it the compound effect. And I responded and said like, well... I want to read the compound effect then because I think that makes me more intrigued because at the end of the day, success is pretty similar yeah. and good habits are also similar. So it wouldn't be shocking that two people talking about how to achieve something happen to correlate their beliefs. Weird, like, yeah. that, that doesn't weird discredit that. either one of those books. If anything, it, it gives it more credibility, yeah. right? And so I think that it's so easy to, to feel this pressure to be unique or to say something special that no one said before. Yeah. But it's like... Everything's a remix. Yeah. Everything's already been said, you know? Mm-hmm. So just be authentically true to yourself. And if it came out of your mouth, those are your words. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. You know what's crazy? <laughs> Mallory, uh, make sure to note that one down. <laughs> Time stamp that one. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I finished up school and I finished up high school, did two years of teaching skiing. Now, I, that's cool. That's that's very. It was super for you. fun. It was a blast. Um, taught skiing, did construction in the summer. Uh, one summer, I went out and uh, worked on the Green River in Dutch John, Utah. It, uh, did you like the that? raft shop guide? I liked where I was. I didn't yeah. like my work, but okay. I liked where I was. Yeah. Uh, a lot of a lot of what I do too in life is based on um, where I am versus what I'm doing. Sure. Uh, I I'm very much an environment person, so. In yeah, in Dutch John, I work in a raft shop. We close up the raft shop about six o'clock. It's summer. We go drop the boat off at the boat ramp. Schedule somebody to come pick us up at you know nine o'clock. That's awesome. We roll the boat down the river. That's where I learned to fly fish. Was on literally one of the best fly fishing sp- spots in the world. One That's of really like cool. the the creme de la creme of fly fishing That's is awesome. where I got to learn. Um, a blast. So I did that, and then went to school or went back to taught skiing again, and then decided. Um, I came, I came down f- to Brian Head for a little weekend trip and decided that I was going to uh, go rip around. Uh, well, so anyways, I, I skied at Brian Head and then I came down into Cedar City and was checking it out. I walked around the campus. I was like, oh, I really like this place. Like, again, environment is such an important thing for me. Yeah. So I was like, I like this area. What made you like? What, what about it did you like, do you think? I just like small towns. Yeah. I like small towns and I wanted something different. I wanted to be cl- – I'm a huge family guy. I love my family. Um, I wanted to be close enough to my family that if I needed to be there, I could be, or if I wanted to be there, I could be, but I didn't want to be too close that I was always there. I think it's really important for every young person, like young adult, yeah. you know, to get away from your family. Yeah. I, be- it, because the thing is, is you're, you're raised in, in whatever culture you're raised in. Mm-hmm. And, and so you form the beliefs based on your surroundings. Right. And if you never leave your family, you're always going to be drawn back to that belief system yeah. because that's where you spend all your time and, and that's all the information that you get. And so I think that it's so important when you're young to get away. And I think you're absolutely right. Like get anywhere from four to 10 hours away. So you can always get back within a day if you need, but allow yourself to go and develop your own beliefs and your own systems and your own foundation as to how you want to live your life independent of that culture that you were raised in. And you may find that you end up doing it exactly the way that your family did. And that's great. Or you may find that, wow, I'm completely different. Oh yeah. With given my own volition, I want to live a completely different life than what I would have lived here. So I think, I think that's really good advice. Yeah. I mean, it was a huge, huge step for me. Um, and something I would never change. What, and when you went to school first, did you know what you're going for? No clue. 
I just showed up. I took some gen eds. Uh, my first semester, I climbed. Uh, I started. I got into rock climbing, and I would climb from about 5 p.m. till about 3 a.m. in St. George because it's so hot. So we'd climb out in Mose Valley. Sure. I remember you telling me that. Yeah. So we would climb all night, and then we'd get home. I'd sleep, and I didn't have classes till noon. So I had a class from noon to 5. I had classes from noon to 5. Yeah. For some reason, that's how my schedule lined up perfectly. It was just all gen eds. Um, did that for the first semester. Kind of was like, oh, I could be a communications major. And all my friends were in outdoor recreation. So I started leaning that way. Took an outdoor recreation class. Bored me to death. <laughs> um, so then I ended up in, yeah, then I transitioned back to communications. Um, and then during a communications course, we had to take an uh, intro to hospitality and so I took that from my my dear friend AJ, uh, Doctor Templeton, and that really changed, set the course for where I'm at now. And what about it? Do you think do you like you were drawn to people? Yeah, that's what Hosp- hospitality is people. Yeah, absolutely. And I love I love people. <laughs> <laughs> they make me so happy, and like getting to hear different stories and different experiences. I mean, that's and then what life and is then about. obviously it's hospitality is highly uh, location driven, right? So yeah, you, said that you get to be in incredible places if you're if you're smart about it. You get to work in incredible places. Um, so yeah, I want I always want to set myself up to work in cool places. Yeah, is really what I want in life. Yeah. Um, to have the freedom to go experience new things in cool places. Um, anyways, yeah, so I took that hospitality class and just was like, this is actually really cool. I took another one and ended up there. Um, and yeah, now I have a degree in hospitality management. And You're the, too- only, <laughs> the only person at Vibrant with a degree in hospitality. You're crazy, huh? <laughs> yeah. I'm the only person at Vibrant with a degree. In- I think so, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, Becca has a degree. Oh, shout out, Becca. Let's yeah, go. That makes sense. Is Becca coming today? That checks out now. She couldn't oh, make bummer. it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I have a degree in hospitality management and there we go. And now here we are. Now here we are. So then let's, one question I like to ask people is, and, and answer this and you have the freedom of expression to answer in whatever way you see fit. But what would you say is your biggest win in your life? Hmm. And I like to not give a precursor to what I'm going to ask you because yeah, don't. then you're forced to, uh, so you, you didn't know I was going to ask you this. So you're forced to just kind of internally dissect that. Biggest win in my life. We're gonna. Have, it's gonna take a minute here, Mallory. We're gonna have to cut this. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Biggest win in my life has been making decisions for myself and not for others. Ooh, I didn't know you're gonna drop that kind of heat. <laughs> <laughs> um, Elaborate on that. That's good. When I decided to go to school, I, I when I decided to go to school, I uh, made the choice consciously that I was gonna go figure out who I was and what I wanted to be. And now I'm at that point. You gave me goosebumps. That's, that's why I like to look at that. <laughs> yeah, that's, go ahead and show yeah. that to the camera, please. <laughs> I mean, that is good. Um, that's deep. Yeah, I, I so made important. the conscious choice to decide who I wanted to be uh, and where I wanted to go in life. And I didn't know where that was when I made that choice to leave. You still don't. No, I still don't. You know, you, you never will. Because yeah. as things in your life change, the person you want to be changes. Yeah, 100%. Um, so yeah, I but I figured out who I didn't want to be. And now I am who I, I personally, I don't know that I'm where I want to be yet. By no means am I where I want to be yet. I know that actually. Um, and you probably will never be there either. I'll probably never be as, where I want to as be. As what you're capable grow. of grows, then your aspirations grow so along your aspirations. with it. Yeah, yeah. The book I read said that in it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I am who I want to be though. That's pretty incredible. I know that much about myself is that I am who I want to be. Uh, as far as, as, as a person goes. And you said something earlier that you just have a positive disposition. And so I was curious in your backstory if that would get brought back up, but it didn't. So what, what make, what do you believe has driven that positivity in your life? Like that mindset of like, I'm going to always be positive and everything. <laughs> um, the toxic positivity of family. Okay. So my, I love, I driven. love my family and by no means are they toxic, but my family, you cannot get them down. You oh. cannot, you cannot break spirit. <laughs> That's certainly true for you. I mean, I can't thinking back like in the whole time you've been here, I can't ever really think of a time that you were like upset. How many, how many blitz games in NFL jam? Yeah, have I, was I, just, lost? I was going to say, so we at Vibrant have a couple arcade <laughs> games. We have NBA jam and NFL blitz and, uh, Kyle, I'm horrible. It's not good at them, but he's <laughs> always willing to play. And so we've played, let's just say we've played 
150 games of Blitz. More than that. We've only, you and I, I, I have 80 say, losses alone yeah, in Blitz. Let's say that you and I have played uh, 100 games of Blitz against each other, and that means I would have won 90 and you have probably won 10. <laughs> it's 26. And if Anybody's curious. But not against me. It's 106, <laughs> win, 106 games now that we're, I'm putting the math together. So, uh, But you always have a positive attitude about it. Like <laughs> You want to win, but you're also not taking it so serious that it upsets you. And obviously NFL Blitz is not important enough that anyone should be losing sleep <laughs> no, over it. Nobody should lose. But your willingness to always be positive no matter what's in front of you is really an incredible trait because your life is what you make it yeah. and what you believe is true becomes true. And so when you have a positive attitude and a positive outlook, it absolutely changes the ramifications of your life. Yeah. I've t- really, truly, uh, through my junior year of high school, I was a pretty negative person. Um, Going through a lot of stuff. Didn't have no a lot one of wants friends. to be around negative people. Nobody wants to be around if that you've person. Got that I was, person I was in your alone life, my junior year. I bet you were because no one wants to be around that. It's hard, right? Because I don't want to say that you need to have people around you and you, you know, you need to be positive all the time. But if you want a lifestyle where things open up to you and good things happen to you, um, you need to change your mind. Change your mind, change your life. That's, that's, a- <laughs> that, that's absolutely true. And on that point, I think what's important is you said you don't have to be positive all the time, right? Yeah. Um, but I think an interesting way to think of that is it's better to be positive all the time. It, Just will, like, it will benefit you more. You don't have to be healthy all the time, but your life will be better if you are healthy all the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so certainly you're going to have ice cream here and there. You're going to have a drink here and there. Like it's not like you have to – you shouldn't be in the pursuit of perfection. You should no. be in the pursuit of progress. Always. Um. Yeah, the, crappy things are going to happen sometimes, and it's okay to acknowledge that, and it's okay to be there for it. We're going to lose more than we win. It. Yeah, of course. Um, but if you can quickly turn that around and learn from it, you will be infinitely happier and turn that into a positive. It creates uh, the fabric of your lives, right? Like you can't, you can't really appreciate success in the moment. It's very difficult because in the moment, you're, you're oftentimes humans were looking forward, right? Yeah. But then when you look back, it's like, oh man, I did this and mm-hmm. I did that. And there's I did so, this. there's so many good things. What my good friend, Cody Aiden always says, um, opportunities create or obstacles create opportunity. Absolutely. So yeah, I think if there's negative things, take that as an obstacle and create an opportunity out of it. Okay. So next question then. So biggest win. That was incredible. See if you can top it. What's yeah, your biggest uh, loss? My biggest loss. <clears throat> We're going to have to cut this too. We're going <laughs> to have to think here for a minute. Biggest loss. Actually, Mallory, would you put in that sound? Um, do, do, like, do, yep, do, that's do, the one. Do, do, do. Jeopardy music. Yes. Yeah, the Jeopardy music goes there, please. Um, man, it's hard. I've never, I've never had to think about negative things in my life. Yeah, that's I have. Hard. I come from, pardon my French, but pretty fucked up, like home situation yeah as far as i wondered if that's where you'd go with it yeah i come from a a pretty tough situation as far as my parents go um i love them or i I love my mother dearly i have a hard hard time with my father um and i i I can't even think of like a personal loss in that aspect you know everything is so hard Hmm. because as we were talking about before because there were in the moment you definitely had losses where you're like this is oh, this, this is, is the devastating i'm never to gonna me. i'm never gonna come out of this the problem is we always and really the solution is we always come out of everything yeah. and so once you have enough time between that nothing devastating that thing and now nothing really matters mm-hmm. so like as i ask that question it is always difficult for people to answer it because as they look back on their life they think like because even for you with your parents right and you think back to like okay that was difficult. Yeah. But then you ask yourself, well, what I would, would I change it? And the answer is absolutely no. Because by them being uninvolved, it allowed your grandparents to be more involved. And your grandparents were these incredible inspiration and mentors for yeah. you in your life. And so you think back and think, oh, well, I certainly wouldn't want that to not exist. And so I think the value to the listeners is to realize that whatever loss you're going through currently in 10 days or 10 months or in 10 years, it doesn't even matter anymore. Yeah. Um, one thing I want to like, it's not that my mother was uninvolved uh my mother didn't have the capabilities to be involved right absolutely so so by no choice of her own she uh she was not able to be the things didn't have the capacities didn't have the capacity to be uh the provider yeah i would say she was there emotionally and 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 mentally for me always and spiritually too um and physically yeah she's always been there um but as far as like a my grandparents did a majority of the uh the supportive roles yeah Um, but yeah, I, I would agree entirely. I think 
Yeah, I don't know. So uh, you don't even have one. I, I really, this I don't. Dude's I, so it's so positive. <laughs> <laughs> he can't. It's hard because, because like you just said, like everything sucks in the moment, right? The yeah. hard, not, not everything. When sucks, it sucks, it sucks. When it sucks, it sucks bad. But uh, you know, ten days down the road, I have I have goldfish memory, so it's like, you know. That's a that's a great minutes, it's a great attribute. Five know? minutes down the road, that shit didn't matter well, anymore. The thing is, it's already happened if it's in your past, and there's not a there's goddamn not thing you can, thing do, you about can do about it. it. So putting any energy towards it is a wasted energy. So I think I think not having an answer in itself is a great answer. I, yeah, I genuinely like I don't. Yeah, I think I would agree. So then, next thing I want to talk about is: Do you have a mentor, or do you believe in mentors? Like, is there someone who's been like this awesome guidepost for you, and what value did you derive from them? Yeah. Um, um, as far as like personally in my personal life, uh, my uncle Don, huge mentor for me, um, somebody I love to, to throw questions at and probably not as much as I should. Uh, I trust his advice deeply. Is that who just came to the office? The yeah. Other week? Yeah. Cool. So that's Don. Uh, he texted me the other day and was like, Hey, I'm in town. I was like, Oh, sweet. Um, he works for United healthcare, I believe. And, uh, was in here for a little conference. Was that the lunch where, you, where the kids saw you in That is shirt? the lunch where, and my uncle goes, did you ever think anybody would ask you that? I was like, no. That's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, my uncle Don, uh, as far as like my personal life goes, and then um, definitely as far as like, as far as business goes, like you guys have been a huge help sure. for me because like you and Breck and Spencer, simply because like I don't have an understanding of the business world. But I would consider myself an entrepreneur. Like I love, definitely, you I love ideas. Spirit. I love, like I, I feel very creative. I feel like I'm in that creative space. Yeah, um, where I can come up with ideas. So in that aspect, like yeah, like you guys have helped point me in directions where I didn't know were possible. I didn't know things that like you know. I didn't know that I could do those things. I think that's why it's so important to surround yourself with people who have done things you haven't done. Yeah, because the, that's really the best way to learn. Right? Is you want to have people who are trailblazing whatever it is that you're after right so that way you can you can see firsthand and be involved and like okay this is this is how i can grow or right and you can also learn the do's and don'ts and what you like and what you don't like and yeah. so i think that's i think that's really important i think having a mentor is critically important for for growth oh a 100 percent. so the next thing i want to talk about is routine so a lot of times the people who are on this episode have, have these routines ingrained. I don't know that routines are necessarily your style, but I'd love to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a really astute observation, Cody. <laughs> but I think that that is the beauty of winning the moment is that everyone is going to win in their own ways. Yeah. And I honestly don't believe there's a right way or a wrong way to do things because all that matters is how are you the most effective, right? Yeah. And so I'd, I'd be curious to know your thoughts or beliefs on routines or what you use in your life to achieve the things that you're, you're striving for. Yeah. I think that when I do use routines i feel better yeah um i mean you have one routine that's incredibly ingrained in riding your bike right yeah. so you've got uh, so, that one routine that and i think that was another undeniable another purpose of choosing to ride my bike every day for a year was burping um choosing to ride my bike every day for a year was that step to start creating some routine for me versus just wake up shower brush my teeth get dressed go to work work all day come back shower it brought your consciousness to life i shower twice a day but yeah you brought your consciousness to life yeah right? like because i was doing instead of just letting your soul. subconscious drive you throughout mm -hmm. your day and really being in the rat race of like to what your point wake up work go to sleep so so yeah to preface that like i started full-time with vibrant uh again so i worked i was an intern and then i became and then i got brought on full-time and i started back up last may yeah um and then I had one more semester in the fall, but last May, through, so through the summer, I was working full time. And from, I got back from a bike trip and then from May until July 18th, I did nothing but work and drive. That was it. Yeah. Those are the two things I did. I don't think I went on a single trip. I didn't do anything for me. So that's three months of my life. I will never get back. Just in the rat race. Just rat racing for no, like uh, no apparent gain. You know, like I was, I was making financial gains. But like that was it. But not really even either. But right? not really even. Yeah. You're was... just you're making money and then spending money and yeah. making you're just you're fully in the cycle of life. Yeah. And I think it's so important for people to find a way to to pause that cycle or to at least bring their consciousness to light so mm -hmm. that they start dictating their life versus letting their life dictate it for them. Because you like you weren't really driving your life, your life was driving you at that point. A hundred percent. And that's what making that choice was. So my my you know, my takeaway as far as routine goes, and this is for everybody, like Find something 
that makes you happy, whether it's a physical activity, whether it's reading, whatever, whatever it is, um, find something that makes you happy and do that every day. Yeah. Whatever it is, it can be for 10 minutes. It can be for five minutes. Yeah, even for me, just reading 10 pages in a book a day, it's like, that's a pretty small commitment. Yeah. But if you can make that commitment, then one, you'll usually do more. And then you just feel like you get that sense of accomplishment. Like, okay, I did mm-hmm. it. do something for yourself every day is yeah. really the bottom line. Um, simply because it makes you happier. My mental health, my physical health, I've never, I've, I normally get sick like four to five times a year. Yeah. I've been sick twice. Yeah. It makes sense. Which like, and like one, I was just weird. Like last week, I just had a crazy headache and threw yeah, up. Yeah, I wouldn't even really count that. As yeah, sick. it was just that like was a just like a, a weird, weird thing. thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then uh, before that, in this uh, right as the semester ends, I always get sick at the end of the semester for some reason. I just get stressed out, probably because you say it. Yeah, probably actually. You know, so um, then you're like, oh, it's then no more semester, semesters. I'm, though, so I'm never getting sick again. There you go. There's me. There's me saying it. I think you said something really important too. That do something for yourself. That's why I love the mornings. Like for me, my mornings are all about me mm-hmm. because if I take care of myself in the morning, it allows me to take care and support others throughout the day. And I'm not going to be very effective at that if I don't take that time for myself. Because you can even create resentment internally, even though no one stopped you from doing it but yourself. Yeah. But then you're like, oh, I got to be at work. And then I got to go to, I got to go on a date and I got to do this with my kids and I got to do that. And it's like, and no one said you couldn't do anything for yourself. You just didn't. But then yeah. you want to look out, out outside of yourself and say, like, gosh, all these people are, are pulling on me and I need time for myself, you yeah. know, but you got to make that time. This forces me to make that time. Right. I mean, even when we went to Vernal, I was like, guys, I got to like, I got to go. Ride. Yeah, no, it's really, it's been really We're incredible. trying to party. We're trying to have fun and I got to go ride. And think about what it did for you mentally. Like the belief you have in yourself now. I can do anything. Because, absolutely. Like, not- and I don't, I don't say that like, oh, I can do anything. Like I genuinely know in my in my heart of hearts like in my core you want something you can do i can do anything i want to do that's amazing um okay so the next question is you've read winning the moment i don't know that you've read the whole thing but is there any takeaway in the book for you that was like your aha moment um just like uh, just like change your mind change your life as far as like that goes it's, it's absolutely it's, it's such hard a, it's because, such an overarching theme well like, and all the philosophies a, are simple yeah. right because things like it's it's not difficult to succeed it it really is easy but people want it to be difficult because then they feel better about their lack of success yeah but a simple thing like change your mind change your life actually will yeah. have huge ramifications it's it's yeah and it sounds silly and you say it to people like you said it to me the other day because i was upset about something yeah and you were just like change your mind change your life and i was like fuck you <laughs> <laughs> you know what like i don't want to hear that shit right yeah, now. yeah no buddy. one wants to hear yeah. that in that moment but then i walked around i was like god damn it like he got me yeah like, i do i it's literally just my mindset like i have the time to do this i have the capability i have the skill there's no reason i can't do it um so yeah change your mind change your life Okay. I love it. And then the last question I ask everyone is, how do you define success? <clears throat> so quiet in these headphones. Now <laughs> <laughs> you're from the back. Just give me your answer, not the answer you think you're supposed to say. No, yeah. Success for me is just being being in an environment I want to be in. Absolutely. I mean, you already talked about it, right? Like that's that's the thing that you're striving for. Mm -hmm. It's less about what you're doing and more about where you're doing it. And I think the beauty of asking everyone that question is it's really insightful for me to see everyone sees it differently. But also to understand that society cannot have a uh, definition of success because it is so predicated on the individual. Yeah. Right. And so, and that's what I want people to understand. And you talked about that kid who came up at lunch asking about colleges. Like he clearly hadn't defined success for himself yeah. because he was just trying to find like, where is society telling me to go? Yeah. When what he really should be focused on is where do I want to go? Where do I want to go? I think that that is huge. Um, there's a saying and it's anywhere with the right people. And for me, I, I translate that to anywhere in the right place or it, with, well, it's exactly that. Yeah. Absolutely. Anywhere with the right people um, makes life a good time. And there's places in, in your life and everyone has that place where you go and you just feel like, yes. Like for me, I love the beach. I love being able yeah. to see the ocean. When I can see the ocean and feel the sand, it's like. I'm the exact opposite. Yeah. When I'm up on the mountain skiing, I've got my friends with me and we're just, just bouncing off each other chasing each other down a mountain that's your happy for me place. that's my happy place or yeah. on a bike man when i was in texas ripping around yeah following people i never even met before i mean i was i chased two guys a hundred miles 
because I was like, man, these people are like, I like these people. Yeah. This is where I want to be. This is what I want to be doing that's in this what moment. That's what we're all chasing in life, right? Is that moment of bliss where it feels like nothing matters. Time is irrelevant. Like mm-hmm. when you're on the hill, it doesn't like, you're not like, okay, what time is it? You're just enjoying the moment. Oh, flow and, state. 100%. Yeah. I'm always chasing flow state, when, whatever it's in. When you're in the present, there's nothing that's better than that. Yep. Okay. Well, let's, uh, let's let the audience know. We talked a little bit about it, but anything you want to leave them with, where to find you, how to follow you, what do you want to give them? Um, yeah, you can find me at Airtime Aldridge on Instagram. My name's Kyle Aldridge. Um, they can find you in Kyle, Texas with all the other Kyles. Yeah, I might go to Kyle, Texas with all the other Kyles. Um, and then, yeah, uh, if you want to get into biking, shout out state, uh, they have actually super affordable bikes. Um, that I, I rode the 4130 all road and that thing is bomb proof. I've had it over two years now. I am not nice to gear. I'm not nice to equipment. And that thing has, has held up through the test of time, um, and thousands of miles. So yeah, there's that, uh, you can go get a bike at state bicycle company and, uh, yeah, don't go to college. If, if, if you don't, if you know what you want to do, don't go to college. So Okay, I love it. Well, hey, thank you so much for doing this with me and taking yeah, the time. Thanks for having me, man. I this really is huge, enjoyed this it. This is my first like official official podcast. Yeah, it's where fun, somebody where it? I get to talk about me. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's, fun. it's more fun to actually let people talk about them than it is talk about myself. I like being on this side of the table a lot more. That's pretty cool. Okay, well, thank you so much, cool, and uh, make sure you follow us uh, on Winning the Moment. You can follow me on Instagram at Cody underscore Aiden, and then you can go to CodyAiden dot com. Thank you so much, and thanks for listening. Y'all keep her moving. See you tomorrow. What'd you think? That was fun. It was great, wasn't yeah, it? That was a good time.